Hey, and welcome to The Short Stuff. I'm Josh, and there's Chuck, and Jerry's here, too. And Dave's not, but he would be if he weren't doing something else right now. He sends his love and kisses to all of you <laughs> from Dave. This is Short Stuff. That's right. And we're talking about uh, what's called the phonetic alphabet. And we're like, well, I don't know what that is. It's a phonetic alphabet. <laughs> uh, you do know what it is if you've ever seen a war movie. Or if you're hooked on phonics. Uh, or if you're hooked on phonics or, you know, you may not be using the um, actual phonetic alphabet that they finally agreed on, <laughs> which we'll get to. But you may be using your own version if you've ever been on a customer service call. I've done that. And you've had to, you know, say, well, my name is Chuck. Jack? No, Chuck. C as in Chuck. Uh, <laughs> H as in Harley Davidson. H U as, as in Huck. <laughs> ubiquitous. <laughs> Uh, C is in, can you believe I'm having to spell Chuck out? And K is in, uh, kangaroo poop. That's a good one, Chuck. I like that last one. Yeah. I, I never know what to say when I go to do that. Yeah, well, it's I feel always like I different. Get, I feel like, I know, and I feel like I get stumped, which is remarkable that, like, I can't think of a C word, which is crazy. Mm. Especially, um, you know, with the yeah. C word. We just walk on past that one, Chuck. <laughs> Why would you possibly want to assign words to letters when you're talking to somebody on a customer service hotline? Well, I have an answer. And by the way, thanks to Popular Mechanics and uh, NATO.INT in particular Ooh. for this. Uh, you would want to do that because, you know, a lot of this stuff started out after, uh, well, it all started out after radio communication was born when that there were an excellent point i hadn't considered you know when there were tel telegrams were the the way that people communicated uh it was very easy to see what someone meant because it was spelled out for you but mm -hmm. once radio com started uh and especially in things like war uh, if you're trying to let's say report your position because you're being bombed the person on the other end they, they can't see you they can't read your lips uh, they're, they're hearing bombing going on and people probably yelling and screaming and it's chaotic. And so you really want to get that right. So they started spelling this stuff out just to make sure they knew uh, the correct message. Yeah, makes total sense. Yeah. It's one of those things that's so obvious that it could smack you on the forehead. But <laughs> you just don't think about that. They just did not need it before radio. And people who use the radio a lot... Um, and really, really need clear communication because the stuff that they're talking about can often be life and death. Those are the ones you'll most typically find using that phonetic or NATO alphabet. Yeah. And there's also, I mean, the very foundation of ventriloquism is based on the idea that there are sounds that sound like other sounds. And that oh, can yeah. get very confusing. And ventriloquism, you exploit that by saying those other sounds have uh, less lip movement mm -hmm. as a substitute. Yeah. But if you're on a, on a radio communication with some communique, is that what you would say? Yeah. Uh, then you don't want to get someone, a TH confused with an F, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, man. <laughs> that can lead to disaster. Uh, there's been a long kind of weird history with this, though, yeah. as far as agreeing on it. Uh, the first one came about uh, in the 1920s from the telecom industry, the International Telecommunications Union. Mm -hmm. And I say we read all these versions. They're, they're great. I, they use geographical names, typically towns, sometimes states. There was one I had to look up for X. It's Xanthip. I think it's, you should just read the alphabet. Do it. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I want to hear it. Josh style. Amsterdam. Baltimore, mm -hmm. Casablanca, Ooh. Denmark, Edison, New Jersey, Florida, Galliopoli, Havana, Galliopoli. whatever. You, you inserted a vowel. It's, it's what you do. Uh, who, uh, whoever I was speaking to in 1920 would have known I meant G. Okay. Um, Havana, mm -hmm. Italia. They put a little extra spicy sauce on that one. Uh -huh. Jerusalem, kilogram, makes no sense. Liverpool, Madagascar, New York, Oslo, Paris, Quebec. Roma, Santiago, Tripoli, Uppsala, Valencia, Washington. There's that Xanthip again, Yokohama, and Zurich. I'm just trying to picture you on the war communication. <laughs> when you, oh, no, he said a Galliopoli. It's a no. It is a no letter for Galliopoli. <laughs> right. And they're like, or do you I think he meant Gallipoli? No, he said a Galliopoli. <laughs> <laughs> right. They accidentally invade Galliopoli when they meant to go to Gallipoli. I don't know why all of a sudden you're on a 
communicate with Italy. I have always said Galliopoli too. Really? Yeah, I like it more. I'm going to continue saying it because I say it so infrequently. Why why change something like that? Man, that extra vowel. I'm going to start calling you Josiah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Wait, no, that's the same as calling me Joshua. Oh, is it the same name, basically? <laughs> it's the same number of syllables. Oh, stop it. Josiah, Joshua. <laughs> Uh, militarily speaking, so that was the telecoms industry. On the military side, uh, they started using the Army Navy's phonetic alphabet, which they called the Abel Baker mm -hmm. alphabetic, yeah. uh, alphabetic alphabet because those were the first two. And the Brits used this one as well. And I'll go through this one. Okay. Uh, Abel Baker, Charlie Dog, Easy, Fox, George, Howe. That's a tough one. Uh, item, Jig. King, Love, aw, uh, Mike, Nan, Oboe, Peter, Queen, Roger, Sugar, uh, Tear, as in T-A-R-E, mm -hmm. uh, Uncle, Victor, William, X-Ray, Yoke, and Zebra or Zebra, if you're a Brit. My favorite combination is Roger Sugar. <laughs> yeah, or Easy Dog. <laughs> <laughs> I had a guy the other day, I just got to say this, and I'm even going to name the theater. Okay. The Landmark Midtown Cinema. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. I went to get popcorn at an 11 a.m. showing of the new Indiana Jones movie. Okay. And I said, eh, is that stuff fresh? And the guy went, yeah, I popped it this morning. And I went, hmm, because I know that wasn't true probably. Mm -hmm. They reuse popcorn. All theaters do. Yeah. Uh, I said, okay, I'll take it based solely on that. I go to eat the popcorn in the theater. It is really stale. I was going to say, like, who cares? But I was like, you know what? That was eight bucks. I'm going to go back up there and just get my money back. Just very throw it kindly, in the guy's face. <laughs> I very kindly went to do that. They had to call the manager. I said that it wasn't good and it's no big deal. I just want to see the movie and blah, blah, blah. And the guy that sold it to me with his back to me went, dog, it tastes fine, and put some in his mouth. And to his little buddy, he started going, <laughs> for real? Yeah. Wow. And I usually very non-confrontational, but I went, did you just call me dog? <laughs> and he looked at me and didn't say anything. I think I scared him a little bit. Good. And I went, did you call me dog? And the manager just looked at me and I gave her the kind of look of like, uh, this is where you, this is your turn now. <laughs> yeah. You're, you were like, you gave her, a, you're not going to fire him look. I don't want to fire, but like <laughs> say kidding. something. She didn't kidding. say anything. She gave me my money. And on the way out, I did the very old man thing, which I didn't think I would ever do. I was just like, hey, man, just so you know, forget I'm a customer. Human to human, talking to someone like that just isn't a, a way to go about life. Take it or leave it. And I walked wow. off. Man, did How, you drop your that? microphone? I did. Nice work. So you're doing great landmark cinemas. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good theater. There's just uh, that it, one problem yeah. employee. I know. Uh, all right. <laughs> Sorry. I had to get that off my chest, and that seemed like a good time to do it. So we finished up with Zebra. Uh, to wrap this up before we take a break, mm -hmm. 10 years after that, mm -hmm. the IATA, the International Air Transport Association, said, listen, everyone's complaining because this is too English-centric. English so let's swap out a few of these words. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they said, great, now we can agree in November 1951 for civil aviation only. Yeah. Uh, they swapped out uh, what they uh, Coca for Charlie, uh, Echo for Easy, Foxtrot for Fox, Gold for George, and then you know other things. India's in there instead of Item. Delta so they for just dog. Made it, which one? Delta for dog. <laughs> yeah, the guy could have said Delta. It tastes fine. <laughs> uh, but they they swapped out some stuff just to make it a little less sort of, uh, I guess, American. Yeah, one thing that I was surprised I never knew is that Alpha is not spelled A-L-P-H-A. -A, it's A-L-F-A. -A. Did yeah. you know that? Well, in the in the other version, I think the first version was P-H-A, right? Or was it always F-A? I, I don't know. But I, I wonder if it's like um, product placement from the Alpha Insurance Company. Like they sponsored that particular phonetic alphabet. Oh, no, actually it was Alpha because the only previous was Amsterdam. Or Abel. Or Abel. Yeah. All right. I did not know that. I could have sworn it would have been PH. I say we take a break, Chuck. It's 10 minutes into the short stuff. Let's do it. If you want to know, then you're in luck. 
Just listen up to Josh and Chuck. Stuff you should know. Hola mi gente, this is Wilmer Valderrama, executive producer of the new podcast De My Abuelita First, part of iHeartRadio's My Cultura Podcast Network. Each week, host Vico Ortiz and Abuelita Liliana Montenegro will play matchmaker for a group of hopeful romantics who are putting their trust in Abuelita to find them a date. Your job right now is to get on Abuelita's really good side. Our Abuelita definitely knows best. On Date My Abuelita First, three single contestants will vie for a date with one lucky main dater, except to get their heart, they have to win over Abuelita Liliana first. Oh, Hi, Liliana. Yes, we are ready for love. Through speed dating rounds, hilarious games, and Liliana's intuition, one contestant will either be a step closer to getting that pan dulce, if you know what I mean, or a step closer to getting that chancleta. Let's see if chispas will fly or if these singles will be sent back to the dating apps. Listen to Date My Abuelita First on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcasts. How rude, Tanneritos, is the Full House Rewatch podcast you've been waiting for. Each week, get together with iconic characters Stephanie Tanner and Kimmy Gibbler, also known as actresses Jody Sweeten and Andrea Barber, as they team up to relive every episode of your favorite Friday night comfort show. We spent our entire childhoods on a little show called Full House, playing frenemies, but becoming besties whenever the cameras weren't rolling. And now, 35 years later, it's our biggest adventure yet. Get ready for Jody and Andrea to tell all as they take an in-depth look back at life in and around the Tanner home from the very, very very beginning. So if you think you know everything there is to know about Full House, how rude. We'll be reliving every moment with you and we'll be joined by our Full House family including all your favorites from 192 episodes. We'll reveal the hidden treasures you may have missed within the show and we'll take a trip down memory lane together. Listen to How Rude Tanneritos on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Stuff you should know. No stories. We're going to zip through this last bit. Okay. So um, NATO says, this is this is pretty good, but I think we can improve on the Abel Baker thing. So they form a committee, which means everything starts moving at a snail's pace. Right. And they argue about what to change the letters C, M, N, U, and X to. Mm-hmm. Apparently, they finally got through those, but N just kept hanging on. They couldn't decide on Nectar versus November. That is so funny to get hung up on something like that. Yeah. So we're talking like a couple of years they're talking about this. Finally, the NATO military standing group um, says, we're just going to use this anyway. You guys go figure it out. The the reason everybody was waiting was because the International Civil Aviation Organization, um, which basically lays the, the, the communication standards down for the entire civilian air traffic control universe. Right. Um, they they just, they, I guess they were the ones who couldn't decide on Nectar versus November, so they didn't sign on. But NATO started using it before the ICAO did. That's right. Uh, and then finally, in February of 1956, uh, I believe saying starting in March, they're like, this is, this is going to be the one that everyone's going to use. We need it. Uh, I think the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union, which started this whole mess. Mm-hmm. They came on a few years after that. And basically everybody finally, civilian, military alike, ended up agreeing on the same thing by switching out those letters. And we ended up with those letters with Charlie, Mike, November is what went out, mm-hmm. uh, uniform, and x-ray. So – they have I don't know where you got this list, but they have the pronunciations next to them. <laughs> Which one? Uh, got there's you? there's a couple that I'm like <laughs> really. They have for O it? for Oscar. They say to pronounce it Oscar, and then oh, really? Victor Victor. Well, maybe they were from Boston. I guess so. That's that is really very weird. funny. Yeah. So there you go. That's the NATO phonetic alphabet, and Chuck's landmark cinema story. <laughs> I should title it that. Uh, you got anything else? Nothing else. Well, that means everybody's short stuff is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app. 
Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.